Grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied unto you from God, our Heavenly Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Luke 8, we're there again. We'll be there for four weeks. Has a um, sequence of events, all of which have this in common, that they are um, powers that afflict the fallen world. Because of sin, we live in a world that is sometimes very scary and very painful. And uh, last week, uh, Jesus got into a boat with his disciples, and we found out that even nature itself can uh, be scary because um, sin has entered into the world. And we're not, if you haven't noticed, in the Garden of Eden anymore. But we will be someday when we'll be returned to paradise. And uh, all of nature will be restored. There won't be any earthquakes, any more earthquakes or tornadoes or tsunamis or uh, global warming or heat waves or things like that. So uh, last week we bumped into uh, the 12 disciples who were afraid of drowning, and who did they turn to? And that's the point. You turn to Jesus. You turn to Jesus when, um, when nature uh, assails you. I told you last week I went to the dunes uh, when I was in Blythe, drove down here with a friend, and uh, we went to the dunes. And it was summertime, and there wasn't anybody out there. And sure enough, we got stuck into the sand. And uh, I turned to AAA, of course, but I also turned to Jesus because it was a hostile environment, and it can be that way. Jesus has power over nature. And today, if you notice the first words of the gospel text from Luke chapter 8, right after the storm is they got into a boat, they, went, they completed their trip, and they went to the other side of the lake on which there had been a tornado. That's what it says. A wind came down and settled on the lake. Pretty scary business. And today we uh, uh, bump into another um, incident that we have in this fallen world. And we learn, if we're listening and following the, uh, the first victim, uh, to turn to Jesus. And that's this idea about evil and spirits. Ephesians chapter 6 says, we do not fight against human beings, but against spiritual forces, against darkness, against kingdoms and powers that are invisible and hard to put your foot, fingers on, but they're there. With the kids, I call them moods, but they can be a lot more serious than moods. But that was a handle for them to get the idea, and you do too. They happen to me. They happen to you. They happen frequently to God's people because the old enemy wants you not to enjoy the joy that being a child of God is, the hope that you have. He wants to rob you of that. He wants to rob you of peace. He wants to rob you of confidence. I think that's one of the worst byproducts of, of our bad moods of the spiritual forces, it robs you of our confidence. I'm a golfer, and the worst thing that can happen to, well, I'm not a golfer. No one's really a golfer except those guys on TV. But one of the worst things that can happen to a golfer is to lose his confidence, right, Peter? Right, Peter? If you're hitting the ball square and sinking a couple of putts, your confidence is going up. But the minute your confidence goes down, you can't do anything right. That's what these spiritual forces do. Spiritual forces do. So they get in a boat and they go out on the other side. And interesting the way it says it. And he was and and he was met by a man who was, who had a demon in him. So spiritual forces were out there then and they're out there now. I can't be much more specific other than they're the work of the darkness. They're an extension of the old enemy Satan. They are anti Jesus, and anti everything good about life which includes the things that I've mentioned, and of course the wonderful hope of eternal life back in paradise. 
and what do we know about these spiritual forces is they reside in people. They reside in people. I was trying to think of an example about this, and the only thing I could c come up with, what flitted through my mind, was the story of the Grinch who stole Christmas. Remember that story? Whoville was a nice little community, and the people were happy, and they got happier as Christmas got along, and they started singing happy carols because Christmas was going here as they were preparing their packages and their trees and their cookies and something for Christmas. And these wonderful aromas and sounds of happiness drifted up to Mount Crumpet, <laughs> north of Whoville. I tell you, anybody who lives on a place called Mount Crumpet is going to be a Grinch. And the Grinch up on Mount Crumpet heard this and he wanted to get rid of it. He didn't want to have anything to do with that. He was a spiritual force. He was a darkness. He was a kingdom and a power unto himself. He was like, like John Newton, the guy who wrote your favorite hymn, Amazing Grace. But John Newton was a citizen of darkness before the Lord knocked him on the head and expunged from him that spirit of darkness. And he became happy. So the Grinch chose to go down to Whoville. That's what spiritual forces do. They choose and they look for a place to reside in. There's always a human being. Poor souls that are host to these spiritual darts. Sometimes that's our fault. You make a bad decision. You try out drugs. Then you get hooked. You flirt with some other man's wife. You bust not only up your own marriage, you bust up theirs. Right? You drink a little too much alcohol on a regular basis, and you find out pretty soon you need a 12-step program. Your addiction, if not alcohol, might be sex or money or all these places along the highway, they call them um, casinos. <laughs> <laughs> and you go the first couple of times for fun and you have it under control. And then after a while, it resides within you. Maybe they're not such exotic demons. Maybe your demon is you don't treat people right. There's just a part of you that is mean. You don't control your tongue. Some other power controls your tongue. And you find yourself alienating people, bruising people. We all do that, but maybe it's a habit with you. Or stinginess. Or just a coldness. You're not really abusive to your spouse. You don't throw things at her or him. You're not physically ab abusive. Maybe you're not emotionally abusive. You don't say, but you just don't exude the love that a, that a Christian marriage God wants in a Christian marriage. You're just kind of cold, you're never around that demon. So this guy had a really bad demon and, and what he does is when the Lord approaches him he throws out this question and scholars can't really tell if it's the devil's asking the question or if it's the host, the human being that's asked the question which is what do you have to do with me? Can't you leave me alone? That's the question. Jesus says no. Let's say it's the demons asking the question. And Jesus says, no, I'm not going to leave you alone, you demons, because I have conquered you. I have come down to this earth to take away darkness, to restore not only creation, but to restore the earth under a benevolent spirit, a kind spirit, a light and not a darkness, love and grace and kindness and not this mean stuff. 
So yes, I am not going to leave you alone because you are defeated. Get out of here. You could do that. You could do that. Isn't that what 12 step is? 12 step to me is this close to Christianity. I admit that I become powerless over fill in the blank and need to surrender myself to a higher power. You have the advantage of knowing who, the, not what, but who the higher power is. It's your friend Jesus. So you can go to him. says, Lord, I have trouble with I look at the wrong kind of pictures. I'm on the computer looking at that stuff. What do you have to do with me? And he'll help. And the second, look, it, look. what if it was the man that said, what do you have to do with me? If it was the devil, he says, that I, you're out of here. But what if it's the man that says, what do you have to do with me? Gary, Peter, Barbara. Lord, what do you have to do with me? I'm just another person, weak and sinful. And Jesus says, everything, everything. Whereas I want the demons to go into the pigs or whatever else, they always have to reside, you know. They have to be somewhere. Don't let them be with you. Ask Jesus to move them you. Whereas he doesn't have anything to do with the devils, he has everything to do with you, everything to do with little old you. Little old me, I love you. I came to earth to die on the cross for you, if nobody else for you, to take away your sins and to keep you in the palm of my hands tight so nothing can separate you from the love of God which is in me. I want to live in you more deeply Sometimes I think we're houses that have two tenants, you know. I think we do. We have that struggle all the time, the darkness and the light. But Jesus wants to move in a little bit more deeply, a little bit more deeply. So the demons are expunged. They have to reside somewhere. Pigs, that's a pretty good idea. Hmm. Pigs jump over the cliff, makes big news in the community. Everybody sees about it, hears about it. They run into the community. There's chaos. There's fear. There's trembling. What's going on here? What about the guy? They tell all the townspeople. The whole bunch of them come back out, and they find the man healed. How do we know he's healed? He's clothed. He's in his right <laughs> That's a good start, right? He's wearing clothes. Okay. He's kind of normal. He's having a conversation with Jesus quietly. Everybody else is out running around. He's quiet, having a conversation. That's the way I'd like to live my life. Quiet conversations with Jesus. That's the way I'd like to see this church be. Instead of like the, the herdsmen running around telling everybody, oh, have you been to that church? Oh, no, 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 no. When people come to this church, instead of quarreling and chaos and that kind of stuff, and we do our share. We do our share. I've been here eight months. You're like everybody else. You want your way. You like it the way you like it. Pastor Grieb now is here to grow the church. If he comes here and finds out you don't want to grow the church, there, he's not going to be happy. Pastor Grieb now is not here to hold your hand. He's here to grow the church. He'll take care of you. But if all you think about is yourself, you're going to have problems. Okay. And the man is sitting quietly and talking with Jesus. How wonderful. A peaceful life. And Jesus is ready to get back in the boat. Come back in two weeks. I'll be gone next week. Pastor Alsing will be here to lead a patriotic service. Very timely. You'll like that very much. If you're away, go to church somewhere else. If you're in San Diego, go to church in San Diego. Okay. Be fed. And when I come back, we'll do miracle number three. And then on the 17th of J July, we'll do miracle number four. Four miracles showing the power of Jesus. Today, the power over evil spirits. Jesus gets in the boat, ready to move on. 
the guy, I want to go with you. He says, no, just stay here and in your house, oikos, that's what it says, go and tell your family all the wonderful things God has done for you. That's the way we should be, telling our families first all the wonderful things God has done for us as individuals and as a church. And then you notice what he said. Jesus gets in the boat. He sails away. And the man, he goes and tells everybody, good for him. Are we telling Calexico, Mexicali, Heber? Went to a different place yesterday. Sealy. There's a couple big RV parks out there. They're kind of empty now, but my hunch is in the winter, there's probably about 5,000 people out there. Are we telling everybody? Power over nature, power over spiritual forces. What a great and powerful God we have. And the world seems chaotic. I mean, it, it's worse. It's worse. I mean, I can hardly stand to go through another week because what's, what's going to happen next? Don't you agree? It's like this week was terrible. Jesus is in control. He's in control of those terrorists. He's in control of the U European Union. He's in control of the economy. He's in control of uh, the White House. He's in control of the weather. G Just take that home with you. The power of Jesus over nature and the things that assail us from the spiritual forces. God give you that confidence like a golfer. I'm going to smack this drive, 300 yards. I've never hit a 300-yard drive in my life. 250, right down the middle. I can do it. So can you. The power of Jesus gives you confidence. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, or he in you, and to life everlasting. Amen.